Welcome to this early morning service on Easter Day from here in my home in Bishop's Court in Gloucester. My husband Guy is here with me and there is an order of service on the Dice of Gloucester website if you would like to join in with the words. When it comes to communion, you are invited to make an act of spiritual communion and there is a prayer for your use. Three days ago, we stood at the foot of the cross as we remembered Christ's cruel death as he died out of love for us. This morning, we gather in different homes across our diocese as we celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead. Whether you are a follower of Christ or someone who is simply curious as we pause at the empty tomb this morning, welcome. In a moment, I will light the Easter candle, and it may be that when it comes to the Gloria, you would also like to light a candle or put on a representative light as we proclaim that Christ's light is stronger than the darkness and Christ's life is stronger than death itself. Christ yesterday and today. The, the beginning, beginning and, and the end. Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To, to him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God as we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done. We can be confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. New Testament reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 10, beginning at the 34th verse. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, 
Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to respond to you. Amen. Our Gospel reading began with a tomb, a place of burial. Sadly, that's all part of a rather familiar landscape at the moment. We have very quickly become used to hearing about death. There are daily statistics of those who've died from COVID-19. But the numbers become more poignant when we hear the names, specific stories of named individuals. And our gospel reading about a tomb is one involving some named individuals, individuals who are bewildered and unsettled. Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb. It's early in the morning and it's still dark and things are not as she had expected. The stone which kept the tomb closed has been removed and so she immediately assumes that the body of Jesus has also been removed. This is soon confirmed by Simon Peter and the other disciple we assume to be John. And there is confusion and a lack of understanding Mary says, I don't know where they have laid him. I don't know where the body is. And we're told that when the disciples see the empty tomb, they too don't understand. I wonder how often in recent days, we and those around us have expressed some sort of confusion and bewilderment. After all, life as we knew it has changed so fast in recent weeks. It's been unsettling and we don't understand. The events of that first Holy Week also moved very fast. Those disciples at the empty tomb had been with Jesus only a few days earlier, sharing in the Jewish Passover meal. And they must have remembered so vividly Jesus entering Jerusalem on a donkey and being hailed as king and people shouting Hosanna. And then so quickly, after that celebratory meal, the tide had turned and Jesus had been arrested and the nightmare had begun to unfold and it ended not only in tears, but in a brutal death as Jesus was nailed to a cross. And now in their grief, there is still no peace for Jesus' followers. Someone has removed Jesus' body from the tomb. The uncertainty is not over. Last year on Easter Day, I also spoke about times of uncertainty. But then it was about the uncertainty around the withdrawal from the European Union. Perhaps that all now seems like a distant memory because the B word has been overtaken by the C word. Now our uncertainty is not focused on Brexit, but on coronavirus. And we still find ourselves living amid huge uncertainty. Yet on this Easter morning, as last year, and indeed on every day of every year, we are faced with something which is certain. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As Mary stands weeping outside the tomb, someone speaks to her. 
She thinks it is the gardener. But then he speaks her name, Mary. And she recognises that this person is Jesus, risen from the dead. Suddenly, in a moment, everything changes yet again. And it's personal. And names are important. On a number of occasions recently, I have expressed my dislike of the phrase social distancing. Yes, it's vital that we abide by the rule of physical distancing, but this is not a time to be socially distanced from one another. Relationship matters. Names matter. I think we learned a lot about social distancing through all the tension and division around Brexit. But what has been inspiring through this time of uncertainty, sparked by a pandemic, is that people seem to be rediscovering the power of social connection. Thousands of people standing on doorsteps or at windows, clapping and banging things in appreciation of the NHS and all those who are serving us. That is social togetherness. Perhaps in adversity, we are discovering more of what it means to be interdependent human beings, each with a name and a story. And at the heart is love. Love which began with the love of God, who created us to live in relationship. Our God who knows us by name and loves us, treasures us more than we can dare to imagine. Just look at the cross. Just look at the empty tomb. And when Jesus speaks Mary's name, she knows that love and she wants to hold tight to Jesus. Death had brought a distancing which had brought unbearable pain. Yet Jesus speaks to Mary with words that seem to almost impose a distancing. Do not hold on to me. Then he speaks strange words of ascending, strange words that will become a reality in due course when the risen Jesus leaves the earth and the Holy Spirit will come to be Christ's presence in every time and every place. But that's the next bit of the narrative which we celebrate at the festival of Pentecost in 50 days time. Standing by the empty tomb, Mary doesn't understand any of that. She has encountered the risen Christ and now she wants life to go back to normal, life as she had known it. Yet it cannot and it will not. Life will never be the same again. I found myself saying that several times in recent days. This time of COVID-19 has changed us, challenged us. And I hope that we might continue to learn more about love and kindness and social closeness, even in the face of physical distancing. But even more than that, I yearn for us to take hold of the certainty that nothing can undo the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It has happened. And nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, not even COVID-19, not even death. Nothing can change the reality that you and I are named individuals, unique and precious, known by God and known by name. And in our confusion, and in our not understanding, and in our places of fear and grief, Jesus draws closer than close, not in physical body, but in spirit. And Jesus speaks our name and invites us to speak his, to reach out and to say yes to his love and his forgiveness. May it be so. Amen. If you are a baptised follower of Jesus Christ, 
I invite you to join with me in renewing your baptismal vows. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal mystery, we have died and been buried with him in baptism. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I, I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I, I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I, I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I, I turn, turn to Christ. Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I, I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I, I come to Christ. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to profess the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptised in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray to God, who alone makes us dwell in safety. We pray for our world, giving thanks for its beauty and crying out for its brokenness. We pray that in these days of viral pandemic, we might learn to live in closer relationship with you, our God, with our neighbours, close by and far away, and with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop, and for your church throughout the world, for our sisters and brothers in our partner diocese, for our cathedral, and for all the worshipping communities of this diocese, that we might be Easter people of light and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are affected by coronavirus, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. And for those who are guiding our nation and all nations at this time, that they would make wise decisions for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all working and caring for the people and places of our diocese in so many different roles and in so many different ways. We particularly pray for medical staff and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for every household across our diocese for the places of our high streets and villages, for farms and businesses, for charities and organisations, for all those wondering what the present and future holds. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
We pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died, for family and friends, praying for your resurrection, hope and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of, of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. Our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And on this Easter morning, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men, women and children the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we and the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. Using whichever language and whichever version you feel most comfortable with, we pray together the words of the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. And so a blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.